Hey you! Hey! Welcome to 406 Broncos! I'm Mac! And I'm this, Dakota. Yeah, okay. Sure. And right. uh, today we're going to talk about uh, the biggest news of the week. We acquired Sua Cravens from the uh, Washington Redskins via trade. Also, today we're going to go over the new NFL rule changes, as well as some uh, QB scouting that the Broncos have been doing over the week, and as well as an incident involving Vaughn Miller and a hammerhead shark. So let's go ahead and start with uh, Mr. Sua Cravens, the biggest news of the week for the Broncos. Sua Cravens. Cravens Clearwater Revival. Bringing the band back. Born in a bayou. Dang, dude, he's younger than me. Oh, that's depressing. Well, you know, <laughs> age 22. For reals? Really? And he's been in for three years? This is his third year. Or this would be his third year? Coming Dang, in, yeah. man. Wow. I actually did not know that's how young he was. Huh. That's sick. That's scary. Anyway, um... In fact, let's look up the trade details because we've been going over this arguing about this. I want to know the exact trade details as we're talking about it. What we do know is we swapped a fifth round pick for their sixth round pick. Or their uh, fourth round pick. Or we gave them a fourth, we got a fifth. That's what it was. And we gave up a f another fifth round pick as well. And, and a, I believe, sixth round pick for a uh, another year. But... Um, watched Sue Craven's, uh... Hey, sorry. Okay, so the trade is... Oh. Right there. Okay, they, they acquired Sue Craven's. Also received a fourth and fifth round pick in this year's draft. Uh, 113 and 149. Washington gets a fourth, 109, and two fifths. 142 and 163, and conditional 2020 sixth round pick. That seems odd that we're going all the way to 2020, but... Oh, well. It's crazy. And, well, I mean, it's a sixth round, too. So. Right. It just seems odd. And it's, I think it's a condition... Yeah, it's a conditional one, so... I don't know exactly if that means that... What that means. But... Anyway, watch the... Uh, I watched the full press conference with Cravens today... And I have to say, I am actually really pleasantly surprised because there was a lot of talk about him just coming off injury, and he was talking about retirement recently. But he he seems pretty assured that all that's behind him. It was just you know caught in the moment, and he is he seems pretty uh, pretty ready to be here, and he's very like excited. That. Yeah, that's what makes me like feel good about him there because he is actually really excited and likes the fact that there is a good team that's interested in him kind of thing yeah and um that's I think, always i nice. think that's yeah I, I think that brings kind of a player a more pep to their step kind of thing when a team really wants him and then they're really excited about it kind of like pecco was yeah how he loved playing with us last year well he, he knows he's coming to a pretty year. good defense too yeah and actually realistic let's talk about Cravens as a player real quick. Now, obviously he only has the two years experience, but this is a guy who can play linebacker and secondary. He's a he's a hybrid player, and he's very talented at guarding the uh, tight end position and the running backs positions, which is something we desperately needed because we failed miserably last year at that. Yeah. Uh, so that's, that's a great added yeah. guy. And this is a guy that we've been – you know, hearing a lot about like this is a guy that the Bronco Brass has been wanting to bring in for a while now. Like, yeah. I like the I, <clears throat> I just like how now I don't know. It just gives me that excitement again with what like one of their uh, decisions. You know, kind of like like holy crap, yes, I like this decision instead of like oh why are we doing this. Yeah, yeah. Well, I get like I get kind of a little worried because he is kind of an injury prone, but I mean, he was medically cleared to play, so that that makes me comfortable on that end of it. Well, it was a concussion deal. Yeah. So. Well, what you and me talked about too, you kind of stated the other day with the fact that like, you know, when you get injured, you play smarter. Yeah. Or was that was that you or was that Robert? We'll pretend it was me. I can't remember. 
For this sake, it's it was me. It may have been Robert, but other than that, I mean, it's actually true. Like, that's like, yeah, if you get injured once, you're going to play smarter, so it doesn't oh, yeah. happen again. Well, so. and he even said in his press conference, he said uh, he will not take, you know, when he was contemplating retirement and now he feels he's been given a second chance to play, he said he'll never take it for granted to be yeah. able to play in this game. So I think that's going to just motivate him and push him to play harder. He's playing, you know, now he feels like he's on a team that really wants him and 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 was fighting for him. And hey, you know what? This if if they were really wanting this guy, there might be something special about him. Like I don't personally know a lot about him. I don't watch Redskins games. I don't know about you guys, but that's just not my thing to keep updated on uh on Redskins secondary. So so uh yeah, I guess uh, we'll see what happens. Uh, it never hurts to add to the secondary, especially when you got a guy that can play linebacker and just kind of fill in on anything that you need. Did Did you see the uh, the video he did on? I think it's Twitter, the Instagram, whole, or was it Instagram? Yeah. The whole new. World. Yeah, 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 yeah. He said that he downloaded that the second he found out because he just <laughs> felt like he needed to do that. So that was pretty. I funny. like that. <laughs> It's pretty good. Yeah, go check that out on the uh, on his Instagram. Pretty funny. Okay, and here we will. Yeah, let's twist gears here. We're gonna go to the. We're gonna talk about these new NFL rule changes. This is something we actually could have talked about last week, but uh, I guess we oh, we kind of spaced that one. Yeah. So so we're a little late to the game on this. Let's let's save this one for last because that's I think we have the most to talk about. Um, okay, new rule. Revised standard for a catch. Yeah, they finally I fixed the catch rule. I like that one. There's... Go ahead. Go ahead and kick it off on this one. On what? On just the, uh, so the here, ground here's, rule of it? Well, yeah, here's the rule as it is. Okay. Basically... Did you want me to read it off so we can no, kind of actually have it? Just, uh... Yeah, just read the first little bit there. Okay, mm -hmm. the requirement to survive the ground has been eliminated. A change designed specifically to avoid future instances of, I can't read that word. Well, the, such as Jesse intuitive. James yeah. and and Des Bryant and Calvin Johnson. Yeah, Calvin Johnson. Basically, the Calvin Johnson rule has been taken out. Uh, from what I understand, as it is, is you have to catch the ball, maintain, uh, make a football move, whether it's tuck it, reaching for the goal line, and have one. Like, you're two feet or another body part down. That's as it is. Now, I feel like we should go back to when a catch was a catch. You just knew what a catch was. Yeah. You know? And now we can review every play. So, I just... It, it just got so crazy. And, like, how much time was wasted in just watching the clips over and over again just to see if it was, you know an actual catch because i mean if there was just a slight bobble in the ball yeah see and and that, well that that's that's still you know defining possession because it says you have to have possession now that's going to well, be still on. an issue is to define possession if you have if you if i mean if you're taking the steps and it is clearly in your hands now that doesn't matter if like either someone hits you and it kind of wobbles or not if it's in your hands it's a catch a catch is a catch um, now, if it slips or if it's like out of your two hands and stuff like that, and there's no possession, really, but it's yeah. still kind of in your hands, bobbling. I mean, that's one you, to think about. But well, like it, got, it got to the point where, like, how how was that not a catch? Like, you're like looking at centimeter movements of the ball instead of. Yeah, you know, yeah, I know. And it, well, it's like, and I think now with all of this, they're kind of going to be a little bit more lenient on the actual possession of the ball as well. There's going to be clear possession and there's going to be not so clear and that's when they're going to you know, be questioning it a little more. But when it's a clear possession, you know, I don't think they're going to get nitpicky with it as much since this. Um, another rule change. Uh, Permission for command center to eject players. Yes. So incidents like Rob Gronkowski last year diving at, at the player... You know, that stuff now that can be reviewed by the command center and during ejected. play, and then that player can be ejected. Any player can be ejected for for something that they deem ejectable. Right. Which I agree with. I think that's fine. You know, I think that's something that should should be in there. We should put that light on. Sucks. Do you agree, though? 
Yes. I mean, kind of, yeah. I agree, like, to a point. Well, I mean, I thought that was kind of crap with, uh... Hell yeah, it was. With Gronk, Gronk. you know? Gronk. You should have got to continue to play. You know, you, you do something that's worth being ejected. Now, the only issue that we might have is if people are getting ejected for things that shouldn't be. But you got to assume that these guys in the booth are going to kind of know what they're doing. Hopefully. Um, okay. Touch back to the 25-yard line. That's official now. I thought it was already official. I thought that was a thing, yeah. But, but now it's now it's permanent. Forever. No PATs at end of regulation. Yep. So, so okay. Like with the Vikings like, yeah, game. Yeah, like the Vikings game where they had to do that. I guess what you said it was like it's awkward to do. Oh well, yeah, I mean everyone's it. running off the field. You know why the Saints don't want to come back out for one more I know. <laughs> snap, but they have to by regulation. Now they don't. So that's that's fine. I mean I doesn't make any never made sense if it's a walk off touchdown let it be done okay these are ones that didn't i was gonna say i was like i don't what what is this okay tabled rule means it's still it's still uh it's still up in the air air. okay yeah not official hiring head coaches who are in the playoffs Mm -hmm. nfl teams still can't formalize a head coaching hire until the coach's current team has played its final game which i I think it's ridiculous. I think you, a lot of these really good coaches miss out on great opportunities while they're, you know, in the. Because think about think about like this Josh McDaniels issue that the Colts had. They could have easily avoided that if they had all the, you know, that, that's the guy they were waiting to get, you know. And I and I suppose they could have still, you know, hired him, but it would have definitely been a lot more official at that point. I don't know. I think it's, it's it's bad for teams. It's bad for coaches that they don't that they can't uh, talk with these teams while they're in the playoffs. But I can see where they wouldn't want that as well. Video on sidelines. Incredibly, in the the year two thousand eighteen, the NFL will continue to ban the use of videos by coaches and players during games. Huh. That's I didn't know there was camera there was a camera thing. To well, they have it. those tablets. I figured those would have That's still shot. So it's like they said they will continue to use still photographs instead. That's so dumb. I mean, god. Why not? You could review the I don't know. I really don't. I think I don't know. Withdrawn rule. Definitely 15 a lot more yard strategy. penalty for pass interference. And I don't, I, I mean, we always talk about it. We always talk about it, how it's like almost, it's unfair with the pass the interference. Fouls. The hardest position in football, in my mind, is a cornerback. I mean, they literally have to be on their toes because, like, the, any wrong move they do, it is absolutely hardcore penalized. Mm-hmm. So now if they, in, in a ref's eyes, you know, calls this a pass interference, Right on that way, like the one yard line. I mean, but they were at the fifty yard line. You know, that really drives me nuts. Yeah. And I scream at the TV every time that happens. And I make like, a okay, break a drive. It's a it's a relief when it doesn't happen to us. But like, I'm still in my back of my head. I'm like, dude, that sucks. Like that. That's unfair to them too. Like, any, yeah. It's I I don't know. I cannot believe that one is just withdrawn. I believe that one should be an actual thing. A fifteen yard penalty. I get it because, like, I, you could abuse it like, oh, shit, they could win this game like this. Pass interfere them. And so, so it's not spot on the field if it was the 15-yard line, you know, well, like thing. And a lot, the thing of it is, though, here's what it should be, is if it's incidental contact, if it's, you know, they're fighting for the ball, but there is contact or, or whatnot, you know, make that a 15-yard penalty. Now, if it's obvious, blatant, you know, you, I grabbed you, Three to the ground, so there's no chance you can catch that ball. Field. That's spot of the foul, you know. Oh yeah, spot of the foul. Yeah, okay, I get you, but yeah, I mean it's hard. I mean that's uh, that's in the ref's eyes. Well, to decide that, that yeah. Too. Well, that's every that's every penalty, you know. I know, but like I mean, there's some that are just right on the paper. Like I mean, yep, that was one. That doesn't that doesn't mean you were intentional. That doesn't mean it was accidental. That's just what it is, and I can't change that. But like now, if you have to kind of think like. I think he did that on purpose, kind of thing. 
I mean, they yeah. can. Oh, they always can try to muster it. Like they're going to like, you know, go for the ball, but they're actually going for the foul kind of thing. You know. Yeah. They can play it off a lot. God. A lot of them do it just to get the foul. What it's hard. Other... It's hard. To, it's hard to determine that. But... There was another issue with that that I couldn't really remember thinking about that made a lot of sense as far as why they wouldn't be able to uh, implement this rule. And I can't think of what it was now. But maybe but that was more of the... Uh, well, we got the one other one. One other one. The, oh, the, the, main one, one. The, the main one you wanted Being to say. the targeting. So any, now, and this is the big one that everybody's been like controversing over, is uh, you can get a 15-yard penalty now and possible ejection for lowering your head and making contact. This is any player. So that's the issue. Now, obviously, the main being the defender. If the defender lowers the head and targets to tackle any player with their head, they can, it's, it can be a 15-yard penalty, and that player can be subject to ejection. However, this applies to all players. So if a running back lowers his head to, like, truck through... That can be penalized. That can be ejection. If a quarterback dives for a first down with his head forward and makes contact with somebody, that can be a 15-year penalty. This is, again, in the eyes of the ref. What does the ref deem as intentional, as harmful, you know? So I think they've already said that they're going to uh, simplify this and make it more clear as to, you know, the competition committee and whatnot's going to decide what should be penalized, what should not. And it makes a lot of, you know, I, I think they will straighten this out. I think ultimately this, this is a rule that should be put in here. And I understand it in the sense that, you know, the NFL has lost billions of dollars in, in money, you know, in lawsuits for head injuries, and at some point you got, you got to make sure everyone is on the same page as far as, you know, this is what you can and cannot do, because, you know, they're losing money, you know, at the end of the day, it's business, and they're going to do whatever they can to, to keep that money in their pockets, and that's just how it is. What do you think? You were pretty quiet on that one. Yeah. I don't know. I just because I know think, you're a I, defense guy. Yeah, I, I I like to see the hits, man. I, I do too, but and, you know I get like, it. I get it too, but then again, you're 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 signing contract. You're making millions of dollars. Yeah, you know what you're getting into. That's you're for getting, sure. It's a contact sport. So it's I don't know. I'm 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 on the fence because you know I think we just keep nerfing and nerfing the sport too much, kind of thing. I get it, but then again, I'm like, you know what? I mean, there's kind of there's a liability in playing football. If it's your dream, you're bound to get hurt doing it. So yeah, that's a lot of sports too. So I mean, it's I, it's kind of just I don't know what to think about it. Like I get trying to keep them safe, but well, you know let's what? just put it this way. Sport. Let's put it this way. I I understand it. Do I necessarily like it? No, but I understand it. Right. And. Okay, I'm kind of actually not too much knowing on this one. You wrote it down, but... It's a um, pretty quick just <clears throat> thought. And it's, you know, we, we keep bringing up quarterbacks. It's just something that's gonna we're going to keep talking about until the day the draft comes. Um, so we have Case Keenum. Does that mean that we're going to not draft a quarterback? I'm going to say not necessarily. No. Because, for one, um, we have that number five pick, so it's always a possibility that we could draft a quarterback. Also, you've got that, that such an elite class of QBs that number it's five hard to pass up. Bound, you're bound to get one. Oh, you're guaranteed to get one. Be, or you're guaranteed to have one there. Because you got to figure, unless the Browns, even, okay, even if the Browns trade that fourth pick, right. you know, there's five pretty top name quarterbacks. So if everyone takes a quarterback up until Denver, there's still at least one. Now, don't get me wrong. I don't think Lamar Jackson is a, you know, five-star quarterback. And some may disagree with me. I think he's a great quarterback, but I wouldn't want him as my 
starting quarterback. That's just me. Anyway, I don't think that's going to happen. I think the Browns are going to keep their picks, and they have so many already. Why, why not just keep your, you know, get two top five players? Anyway, you, you know, you know uh, Saquon Barkley is going to go at some point in the top five. I heard a little rumor that Joey is talking about that Lions are really wanting to belt for the first one. See if they can't figure something out with Cleveland to get. For what? Saquon Barkley. That was a rumor, and I'm like. I don't think so. That's weird. Just to really give all that up for. For a running back that, you know. You know, who could. Who knows? Well, and that only takes one injury. You know, it's one of the highest injured positions. I don't think that'll happen. I don't think anybody is going to move up for Saquon Barkley. Just saying. Like, running backs are a dime a dozen. I know he's a great player. I know he's he's one of the best prospects in a while. But I just don't see it happening. If you're going to move up, you're going to move up for a quarterback. And that's why, you know, the Jets are going to take a quarterback. I just, you know, you don't move up and not take a quarterback. It's just it. So, Brown's got two. They're going to take one. Yeah. I mean, you got to figure the Jets are definitely going to take one. The Jets are going to take one. The Giants may or may not take one. The Giants, I believe, will. I think they should. I think they will. I think they should. Um, I don't necessarily think they will, but I think they should. And the Jets? The Jets will. Yeah, so, yeah, exactly. So the Browns, Jets, Giants are the three above us, right? Yeah. So you got. They're all going to take one. You have to assume at least a Baker Mayfield. Uh, you know, Josh Rosen or Josh Allen is could fall to Denver for sure, almost almost definitely. I believe Sam Darnold. Unless those are the three that get taken up first. Well, and then you got Sam Darnold. So there's going to be somebody worth, you know, having. Here's my here's my ultimate thing that I'm trying to get to. Um, there's been we've been scouting these quarterbacks. You know, there's all week Broncos at Josh Allen. You know, meet with Josh Allen. Meet with they've met with uh, Sam Darnold, Josh Rosen. They were even at the Texas A and M uh, pro day, watching Johnny Manziel. You know, like I don't think they're <laughs> I don't think they're gonna go with Johnny Manziel. Please no. Yeah, but I mean they're scouting quarterbacks like across the board. They're not putting it out of sight, and. You know, I was thinking about this. I saw this, too. Uh, we've been talking about Quentin Nelson guard being a possibility, which, don't get me wrong, I would definitely like that, but a guard has not been taken in the top five picks in ten years. And I don't necessarily think that that, you know... We should break that is, record. Yeah, well, I don't necessarily think that's going to change. Like, I don't know. We'll, we'll find in out. In my mind, it's a, we're always struggling with the line, but I think we've ever... We've all, also have done good changes in the line throughout the off season now. Um, and can and, and can you possi- can you tell me there's not going to be a one good guard at right. that at that exactly. second round spot? Like so come on. I like it's weird because we just got Keenum and I you know I'm going to trust in him, but we have got the number five pick. We can't we can't uh, you know. If it's me, if it's me, I'm taking a like skills a- position: quarterback, receiver. Cornerback, something of a skills position that can that can make an instant impact to your team. That's another thing we need right now. Looking at receivers. Oh, dude, big um, time. I'm pretty. Sh- well, and they're talking about Carlos Henderson. They say he's going to take a a big portion of the uh, slot position. Is that right, Carlos Henderson? Whatever. Because I know we have another. We have a running back, Henderson. Oh, the third one. Yeah. We have two Hendersons. But just wanted to make an added point, though, that we are scouting quarterbacks, so do not count us out for maybe possibly drafting one of these guys. And I... I'd say so. There's a few of them that I would definitely agree keeping on the team. Um, Cut Paxton, man. He's going to be owed, like, $4 million this year. Three or $4 million for just sitting there and not doing very well when he's on the field. Yeah, looking like a pineapple with that little... <laughs> so just down his head. and then injuring himself by just standing out in the field and crying on the sideline injuring himself the second time that year one was no contact so whatever I mean 
if you want to keep them on the team, I mean, that's up to the the head honchos, but uh, we advise not to. Yeah, that's our opinion. Yeah. Get one of these young guys that can make an impact down the road. Yeah. Be the future. I want a franchise quarterback. Oh, we haven't had a franchise quarterback since, since John. John Elway. That's insane. Like, you think about it. We haven't had a franchise quarterback since, like, 1999. <sighs> I want I want a Tom That's Brady. That's 20 years almost. I want an Aaron Rodgers. I want a Tom Brady. Even the Lions have Matthew Stafford. The uh, You know, some of these teams that never make the playoffs have guys that they can get behind. Okay. Actually, that's actually kind of a good topic to go. Who's got a good franchise quarterback? Or who's had a franchise quarterback kind of thing? Because, or who's kind of like in the lines with us? Like, oh, we can't figure out who, who we doesn't? want. Who doesn't? Well, Cleveland. Cleveland can't figure out what they that's want. That's the worst. Anything. Jets. The Jets, the Jets haven't Jets had. The Jets are always screwed. God, the Jets haven't had Bills. a franchise. What the fuck with the Bills? I don't know. But they could have had Tyrod Taylor. I don't blame them for what. See, they're. I think they're hunting. See, I think they're going to trade with the. Uh, they have a chance to trade with the. Uh, um, Browns or us even for a quarterback. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to wrap this up. I can poop. Well, what were we saying though about the uh, whole the whole? Let, let's make that for next week. Okay. Who are like some that. teams that don't have a? Well, like uh, let's list all the teams for who's got, who has a franchise or who's you know who has had good uh, luck with franchises. Oh, dude. I'll tell and, you right now. Uh, we'll, we'll save it for later. Okay. And let's go into that Von Sharkey thing. Okay, yeah. This is kind of an Dude, odd story screw here. screw PETA, man. Screw PETA. To, to get in, in metal into fishing. Like, they metal having into fun. Everything that has to do with an animal. I'm surprised, so, they, I'm surprised wanna... they're not after us for having a horse head as our logo. I know, like, That's right? cool to Oh my gosh, to... that's a decapitated horse head. <laughs> Um, <laughs> the uh, what gets me is like they're saying it was all a legal thing. I'm like, okay, for, for everyone came... that doesn't know, for everyone that doesn't know, Von Miller over the week went to Miami and caught a hammerhead shark on a fishing boat, released it back, and Peter's having a fit about it. Continue. Well, I was just gonna say, is this like how they're, they're you know, they're, they're they're stirring up the pot, saying that he illegally fished and stuff like that. Like for one, how how do they know that? For two, they're in like like right at a city where there is uh, wildlife uh, official. Yeah, fish and wildlife. Every, yeah, fish and wildlife all around. I mean, obviously everyone's out fishing there because so they're out there all the time. So if if uh, if he caught this illegally, they would have already known about that before Peta would. Have. Well, if it was illegal, there wouldn't be any real question about well, it. Well, if if, there were, if it was illegal, too, I think uh, Von Miller and all of them would be smart enough to not post so many pictures about it. Well, and even if it was an accident, like, ultimately, he'll pay a fine and it'll be done. Like, it's not going to turn into anything insane. But if it's an accident anyways, if it's illegal to fish a hammerhead shark, he can't help that he caught it. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh... If he if he gets it and he releases it, there's no trouble there. He didn't take it or anything like that, because that's yeah, he wasn't, that, that allegedly they say he, that he released it. And he was yeah. That, well, that clearly means he wasn't trophy fishing. Yeah. So, if that's what they want to like claim. So, but that I no I guess no. What, what Peter was saying it was illegal and that he killed it. So I don't know. They said. They said they uh, released it. I mean, under... Well, even if he did kill it, they'll never find out because they released it back into the ocean. Anyways, it's it's a shark, man. And he, he was just fishing. Well, Peter's going to blow up about... Any... Okay, when, yeah, I, when, when I went to... When Obama slapped a fly on his head or... By, on was his... that really a thing? Yeah, they got all annoyed. I mean, dude, they're uppity on everything. What were you going to say? Well, when I went to uh, Seattle at Pike's Market where they throw the uh, fish... Yeah, that's... A... They were talking. Well, they, they were doing it, but Peta was trying to stop them from doing that because, get this, it's disgraceful to the fish's soul. To uh, to to disgrace its body. I was after it's dead. I was watching something that they were trying to say that fish uh, feel stress, and you know, like when when you when you out fish and then stuff like that, that actually carries with them. They feel the stress <laughs> and everything, like PTSD in fish. I'm like, so why is it the fact that when I fish, 
I can, I, and I'll remember a fish too. I can fucking catch the same damn Re fish. Where you catch yeah. the fish? Yeah. Well, that's because fish have a five second memory. Yeah, they're they're animals. They have a brain the size of not even a pea, less than a pea. But so uh, we'll we'll keep uh, strong tabs on on the Von Miller shark incident. Hopefully, this does not end in any sort of suspension or uh, anything further action to That'd take so Vaughn to jail. It is, because that has nothing to do with the NFL. It's not going to. I, this is going to blow over like nothing. and it, Realistically, it's not major news. But it is there, Bronco it, news. It is. And, it, and they're trying to make, trying make, to make a hype out of it. So yeah, It's stupid. But we're pretty certain that he's going to... He's going to... Uh, Let a guy fish. Let, Let a guy have fun. You know, instead of like... Heckling them over it. It's just it's a it's a ridiculous deal altogether. Yeah, whatever. But, well, all right. This has been another uh, week of 406 Broncos. Please uh, continue liking, sharing, and uh, invite your friends. We're still behind on the podcast end of it, but we will. Probably get to it sometime next we year. We work a lot, man. So I mean, this is kind of our free time too. We got all this set up, but the other stuff, it's it's coming in time. It's just once we get the time for it. Thank you, and we'll see you next week with something Bye. different. <laughs> once I get the.